Oftentimes when you're building a particle trail setup, the best way to colorize your trails is gonna be by using the age of the particle to define the colors. However, it's a little bit different when you're using an initial pulse emission versus when you're using an actual continuous emission. So we're gonna take a look at the differences between the two and how to set those up. So let's go ahead and set up our initial setup. So geometry node, I'm just gonna use a sphere here. I'm just gonna change this over to a polygon, ups of frequency, and then we're gonna drop in a pop net. So from here, we'll dive in and just get rid of these guides. And then we're going to need to give these particles some movement. So I'm just gonna use a pop wind for this demonstration now. Obviously you can use whatever you want, but let's use a pop wind and just give it some amplitude. Zoom out here and let's take a look at what it's giving us. Maybe that's a little bit too much. And that's maybe not enough. Let's go somewhere in the middle, maybe like 0.7. And maybe actually let's up the swirl size a little bit. Just give us something. That's not too bad, I guess. Let's take a look at the trails now. So let's just drop in a trail node and we'll up the trail length to something like 10 here. And then to make them actual trails, let's do an add node. And let's go ahead and come over to this polygon. Let's go by group, set this from all points to attribute, and then we're gonna use the ID attribute. And this just gives us some initial trails. And that looks all right. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to actually get this set up inside of Redshift. So start off here, we need to come over to our Redshift object. We're gonna set this to strands, and then we're going to change them to, let's just do cylinders, and let's drop the scale down to like point, let's go point two. And then from here, we also are going to need the age and actually let's go ahead and dive on in here again let's just drop in a clean node because if i take a look at our ad here and come over to the geometry spreadsheet you see we have a ton of different attributes that we don't need so we're going to just delete all of those except for the age so we'll do this star and then a We'll do a space and then this little carrot symbol and then age. And if I go back to our geometry spreadsheet, you can see that that gets rid of everything except for the age, which is what we're looking for. Let's go back to our scene view. Let's go ahead and just play this forward a little bit. And that just gives us something to look at. Let's go back up here and you can take a look at the settings and come over to this attributes. Sometimes you may need to disable this and just output your attributes, whatever you need, but it should do it just fine. At least I believe so with this enable automatic extraction. Um, I'm also gonna come up to our render and set our material to this material that I have set up here. And go in here, I just have a particle attribute lookup set to age and then this RS ramp set to, I don't know, one of these things, was it magma? Yeah, magma. And that's just piped into the base color and let's just up the roughness here. And let's create a couple of lights real quick. So we'll create one there, rotate around. Let's just create a second one. And then we also need our camera. So let's do something like that. Should be good for the moment. And let's bring up our Redshift render view. And once this loads up, you'll see that we should have our strands with this set to the color of this ramp that we had set up. Give it a second to build the scene here. And that's a little bit bright. So let's go ahead and just drag that off for the set for the moment. I'm just going to drop our lights down just do this kind of off screen real quick. 
give us a little bit better lighting. And we may change around these colors. So this gives us a little bit of some lighting going on. Let's go ahead, come back to our ramp over here. And maybe let's do the complement of this. Nope, not liking that. Let's try and reverse it. And that doesn't look very good either. Let's just go to something different. We'll just set that to black to orange. And let's go ahead and drag this color around. Like green, let's go like, I don't know. Maybe this like bluish, purplish color. You can see that these initial particles are set to be this blue color and the older ones are set to this orange color and there's no real ramp in between. If I go ahead and set another color in here like green, there's a little bit on the initial particles because they're going past one. Anything past one in this setup in our render view, like, or in our geometry spreadsheet, I mean, anything past one is going to be set to the orange color that's set over here. And anything in between zero and one will kind of follow this ramp. So obviously that's not exactly what we're looking for. So let's come back and fix this. So we're gonna go back to our object and to fix this super simple way to do this is we're going to use an attribute promote. And I'm gonna take the age as our input. I'm gonna set our new class to detail. I'm gonna uncheck this delete original because I wanna keep this age. I'm gonna also change this to a new name. So I'll name this min. And let's go ahead and change this setting to minimum. If I go over to our geometry spreadsheet now, you can see that our minimum value is set to this, and then our older values are gonna be set to the second one, which will be our maximum. So we'll change this to max, and we'll change this to maximum. So now if we go back to our material here, we can just duplicate this particle attribute lookup here and we'll call one min and we'll call the second one max. And then we're going to take these and we're going to route these into a, not a remap, but a change range. And we'll wire the age into the input, the scalar min into the old min. So this value right here, and then our scalar max into the old max. And we're just gonna remap this from zero to one. And what this does is allows Redshift to remap the range to what these values are. So if I go ahead and take a look at our, uh, actually it's not gonna affect our points, I lied. Let's go ahead and take a look at our render view. Go ahead and restart that and you can see now the older particles are going to be set to this orange color and then the newer ones are going to be set to the blue and we have this nice ramp in between which looks pretty good but if i go ahead and pause this this is going to be the same setup if we go ahead and adjust our pop net so i come in here and change from our birth to from a constant rate to a impulse Let's go ahead and just drag that back down. Let's go to frame one. Let's set impulse activation. We'll just keyframe that. We'll set this to like, I don't know, 50,000 should be good. And then we'll go to frame two and we'll set this back to zero and keyframe that. And now as we have some movement to our particles, we go back up, see that we have our trails again. Let's go ahead and start our render view. It's going to look a little bit different here just because the initial spawn is set to be an impulse instead of a constant birth rate. So the start of our particle trail is going to be set to the color that we set up first in our ramp. Let's go ahead and make this just a bit smaller. So if I go ahead and I don't know, change this to infrared, actually that looks pretty similar. Maybe like this plasma is kind of cool and see, you get some kind of cool setups here. 
and you can set these to whatever you want and looks like they've got some weird interpolation going on between the two i usually use just a b spline but whatever works to to get the job done you can go ahead and kind of zoom in on these strands and take a closer look get some nice blending between the colors but that's kind of the basics of automatically changing the range so no matter how old these particles are let's go ahead and just demonstrate that just drag that off for a second zoom back out let's play this a little bit longer no matter how old these particles are we should still get the same type of result so we'll restart this and take a look and there we go Everything's remapped. The strands are all going to be kind of the same here with the same gradient over the all of the strands, which is kind of the look that we're going for. So looks pretty good. I'm liking it. You can adjust that as you see fit. You can even go in here if we wanted to just change this trail to like 20, make them a little bit longer. You can see how that's going to affect our different colors here. So as we refresh our scene, you can see that now the yellow is a little bit more pronounced. There's a little bit longer of a trail. So the yellow is a little bit longer and the purple, everything else is just kind of a little bit more spread out. So just play around with it as you see fit, adjust the settings and get some different cool results with this effect. And no matter how you run your simulation, they will automatically change the min and max values to whatever they have set. Now, if it is a constant emission, then just keep that in mind because the oldest particles are going to continue to change. Obviously, the youngest ones are going to stay close to that zero mark. But as the older ones start to change, your colors are kind of going to change throughout the animation. So as they start out, they're kind of going to be all towards the the front of this simulation. Well, I guess it'll be very condensed, I guess, uh, the, or the, the start of this ramp, I should say. It'll be very condensed, but as they start to spread out, you'll start to see more of these colors kind of come to life, I guess, if you will. But anyways, hopefully this helped you out. It's not too difficult, but it is a little bit um, kind of difficult to find if you're not used to using these attribute promotes and it can kind of pass by pretty pretty easily. So like I said, hopefully this helped you out. I got a bunch of other videos on my channel that deal with Houdini. So if you wanna learn more about Houdini, check those out. I also do a lot with Redshift. So if you're interested in learning more about that inside of Houdini, then make sure you check out those videos as well. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.